these topic numbers. Next is received cash from Arun 5800 and discount allowed to him 200. Now we have received cash of 5800 and we have discount allowed to him. Now first of all we try to understand how many accounts are in here. You have received cash from Arun. So first of all cash account is in what? Arun's account is in what? And it's clear that you are giving discount also. So discount allowed is also involved. It means three accounts are involved at a time. Cash, Arun and discount. Now let's see how to go in, like how we have to frame the entry. As you are receiving cash from Arun, so cash will come into the business. Cash is an asset. Rule is debit what comes in. So cash is coming into the business. So cash account should be debit. How much you have received him from him? 5800. So write 5800 on debit side. And discount allowed to him. Who is going to allow discount to Arun? It's you only because you are receiving the cash. Your firm is receiving the cash. Fine. So you write here discount. Because this discount will be an expense for you. You are taking rupees 200 less from Arun. You had to take rupees 6000 from Arun, but you have taken only rupees 5800. Now, who is going to give you the money? Arun. Arun again, a personal account. Rule says that debit the receiver, credit the giver. So, right here, to Arun. 6000. The total of debit should be on the credit side. Next transaction now. Paid insurance premium of 10,000. Now you are paying insurance premium of 10,000, no? So it means that it is an expense for you. Whatever you pay, whether you pay rent, you pay wages or salary or anything else, fine. So that everything is going to be an expense for you. And expenses comes into the category of nominal accounts. Rule says that debit the expenses, credit the incomes. So in this case, if I am paying insurance premium, then logically I should debit insurance premium or simply you may debit insurance account debit. Now what will go out of the business? Cash. So rule says that debit what comes in, credit what goes out. It is 10. Next is paid life insurance premium rupees 5000. Now see what is the difference between paid insurance premium and paid life insurance premium? Students there is a lot of difference. Life insurance premium is always for the life of the owner of the business. Now in this case the owner of the business is paying the like paying the premium of his insurance from the firm's cash. So it is a kind of his personal expense or you may say it is a kind of drawings. So instead of debiting insurance account in the next entry, you have to debit drawings account. We pass the entry drawings account debited to cash account. Fine. See insurance premium which you paid in the like in this question, this insurance premium is for anything which is related to the business but life insurance premium is related to the premium which is paid on the life of the owner means it is in personal expense of the owner that's why i have to debit here drawings and moreover drawings have debit balances only and now as i'm paying cash so cash will go out of the business next transaction is paid income tax now again it is the same thing income tax is always paid by a person. A company always pay a corporate tax. Fine. So now this income tax belongs to the owner of the firm. Again, what the owner is doing, he is taking out money from the firm's cash to pay the to pay his income tax. So actually it's a kind of personal expense of the owner. So drawings should be debited again. Don't forget to write amounts also.
Next is paid rent two thousand, salary five thousand, carry it seven thousand on the same date. Can you see that we are making payment of rent, salary, and carriage on the same date? So what do you think? Should we pass three different entries? Rent to cash, salary to cash, and carriage to cash, or we should pass one combined entry only? What do you say? I think so. Combined entry should be feasible. Why to write the same thing three times? Right. So instead of passing three different uh, like different entries, let's pass only one combined entry. Rent you are paying, expense for you should be debit. Salary you are paying, expense for you should be debit. Then carriage you are paying. Expense for you should be debit, and what goes out of the business? Cash. Fine. So rent two thousand, salary five thousand, and carriage seven thousand. Total fourteen thousand cash goes out. Now compare other entries. In this entry. Two accounts are affected. One debit, one credit. In this entry, again two accounts are affected. One debit, one credit. In this entry also. But in first and this entry, two accounts are debited. One account is credited. Three accounts are debited. One account is credited. So when in an entry more than one account is debited or more than one account is credited. Then we call such entries as compound entries. Got it? These are not compound entries because here only one account is debited and other is credited. It's only in the case of the first and the last, uh, you know, entry where two accounts are debited, one is credited, so it is compound. Here three accounts are debited, one is credited, it's a compound entry. Suppose if it happens like this, one is debited, two or three are credited, then also it is a compound entry. So I hope the concept of compound entry is clear to you. And the last is purchased machinery for cash. If I give you a transaction purchase goods for cash, then you would have passed the entry purchases to cash because goods are the things in which your business deals, and you have to use the word purchase or sale for them only. But whenever you buy any asset like machinery or furniture or land or building or it could be any asset. Then instead of using the word purchase or sale, you have to use the name of that particular asset only. Now, if you are purchasing machinery for cash, then machinery comes in, cash goes out, and both are the assets. So you are going to pass the entry machinery account debited to cash account. If you are going to purchase some building for cash, then building comes in, cash goes out. Then pass the entry building to cash. Similarly, if you are going to sell off some furniture, then furniture goes out, cash comes in. Then pass the entry cash to furniture. Got it? In case of goods only, you can use only you can use the word purchase or sale. But in case of the sale or purchase of asset, you have to use the word name of that particular asset only. Thank you.